don't forget to subscribe to both Recollection Road channels so you never miss a new video. Also make sure to share and like the video to help it reach more people. Now let's take a look at some strange and obsolete home features from the past. Sleeping porches, which are half inside and half outside, were meant to be a cooler place for people in warmer climates to sleep during the summer months. The sleeping porch could also be used as a bedroom for someone suffering from health problems, and doctors would even recommend that patients with tuberculosis sleep in these rooms year-round. Despite the name, a sleeping porch wasn't always by the front door. It could also be a deck or a balcony, and they were usually screened in or surrounded by windows that could be opened for airflow. Metal plates like this one could be found on older homes that were built using bricks. These cast or wrought iron plates, often shaped as an S, X, or even a star, are peculiar when you see them on houses today, but they are actually wall anchor plates that would prevent the bricks from bowing outward or even collapsing. The plates were evenly spaced and were connected to rods that went through the wall, which helped to make them more stable. Some old houses still use oil to heat the house, but they're becoming increasingly rare. To heat your home using oil, it would require large storage tanks which held the fuel. These old oil tanks could be found in basements and were considered a cleaner way to heat your home instead of using coal. But the oil could be expensive and the tanks were prone to leaking and could become hazardous. Many older homes have abandoned using them, but the tanks may still remain. Does your home have a strange little door in your kitchen or pantry? This was used as an access door for ice delivery. Many homes had a designated area in the pantry or the kitchen that was meant solely for the ice box. The small exterior access door made delivery by the ice man much easier, which allowed the fresh ice to be dropped off without coming inside the house. Dutch doors were popular with 18th century Dutch settlers, and they are doors that are split horizontally in the middle. This would allow you to open just the top to let in the sun and air, while at the same time keeping out animals. The large telephones of the past were often situated in a common area of the home, and in that spot you would find a niche designed specifically for the hefty telephone. Many homes today retain this architectural detail, however the space is more often used as a place to hang keys, store mail, or display knickknacks. If your house has a tiny iron door that leads to the basement, then you most likely had a coal chute at one time. Prior to oil or natural gas, many families heated their homes by burning coal. Coal delivery men traveled door to door to provide people the fuel they needed to power their furnace. They would shovel the coal through the small door and down the chute into the basement. Once in the basement, homeowners could shovel the coal directly into the furnace. Today, most of the chutes are gone, but you can still find the iron doors on the outside of older homes. Knob and tube wiring was an early standardized method of electrical wiring, which lasted from the 1880s until the 1930s. The system consisted of single insulated copper conductors, run within walls or ceiling cavities. Knob and tube wiring was replaced as the method for wiring homes because of the installation costs. As you can see, it was very intricate, and therefore time consuming to have installed. Not to mention new wiring cables were much safer. Push-button light switches emerged in the late 19th century, but eventually gave way to the toggle switch. The toggle light switches we use today weren't invented until 1917, so if your house has these old push buttons, your home is over a century old. Although these buttons may look functional, they were prone to sticking in one position, which wasn't very convenient. The modern fireplace is generally decorative, but traditional fireplaces were essential to keep homes warm during the winter months. Often fireplaces could be found in every major room of the house. The introduction of furnaces and later central heating rendered most of these fireplaces obsolete, 
and many were sealed off. A Hoosier cabinet was a freestanding kitchen cabinet that doubled as a workstation. These cabinets were commonplace in kitchens during the first few decades of the 20th century. They would eventually decline in popularity once built-in kitchen cabinetry and countertops became the norm. If you've ever walked up to someone's front door and seen a cast iron contraption on the ground by the threshold, then you've seen a boot scraper. Boot scrapers popped up in the 18th and 19th centuries and were meant to clear the mud off your boots before walking into a home. As paved streets and sidewalks modernized cities, the boot scraper declined in necessity, but you may still find them adding unique character to some older homes. Invented in 1855, steam radiators were traditionally made of cast or wrought iron, and remained popular despite being less efficient than modern HVAC systems. The radiators made a distinct occasional ping sound which was caused by water droplets being flung by steam pressure. The radiators were cheaper and more efficient than hot water heaters in early skyscrapers, and they also provided the first form of centralized heating in many homes. Decades ago, bathroom medicine cabinets were designed with a tiny slit in them to dispose of old razor blades used for shaving. The blades would fall into the wall cavity and be hidden from view. That is until you renovated your bathroom and pulled the old medicine cabinet out to find hundreds of rusty razor blades. Home milk delivery was common practice during the first half of the 20th century. To make delivery easier, many homes had a milk door that could be used to receive milk and other dairy products. You could also put your empty glass bottles there so they could be picked up. The small door was situated on the exterior of the house and had a door that opened from the outside and another door that opened from the inside so you could retrieve your milk from the insulated box. Picture rails became common in the mid-1800s as a way to hang pictures or wall decorations. A movable hook was placed on the molding, and the picture hung down, which saved the wall surface from damage. By the 1940s, the picture rail was outdated, and patching walls became much easier for homeowners. So most of these disappeared from walls. In older historic homes, this is a detail that is often added back as a way to restore the original character of the home. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.